external jugular vein, or EJ, is a large superficial vein in the neck that can be a real lifesaver when a patient needs an IV but has terrible IV access options. It's not such a hard thing to do, but a lot of the educational videos that you'll see online feature patient models who are in excellent physical condition, have great anatomical landmarks, and are cooperative. In reality, the patients you're going to be putting EJs in are usually none of those things. They're often obese with terrible landmarks and, and anxious. Why don't any of these educational models look like the actual patients that we treat? Because it's incredibly uncomfortable to walk up to a friend of yours and say, Hi, would you like to be my no-necked, overweight, difficult access model for my medical education video? Nobody is going to do that. But I promise you that the techniques I'm going to show you do work on the average ER patient who needs an EJ. Your first goal is to identify the vein. You can make the vein more prominent in a number of ways. First, you can tilt down the head of the bed or raise the patient's legs. You can also have the patient valsalva or bear down to have the vein bulge out. And in some patients, you can even put a stethoscope around their neck. And as you can see, it uh, occludes the distal end of the vein, making it more prominent. As with all veins, percussing the vein or smacking it makes it stand up a little bit more. Here's another trick. Watch as I obesify this neck image and you'll see that the vein is almost completely obscured except for right here just above the clavicle where you can still see the EJ. You'll find that in overweight patients, which is a lot of them, this is all you ever see of the EJ but that's good enough. It's actually a great place to put the IV because down here at the base of the neck there's more connective tissue anchoring down the EJ, making it a more stable vein and less likely to roll out of the way. Many patients won't be able to lie flat for long or Valsalva for a very long time. So once you've located the vein, mark it with a Sharpie or a tissue marking pen. You'll see I'm also putting two little dots on either side of this line. This way you can sit the patient back up while you arrange all your materials and get ready for the procedure. The two little dots I put on there are for where I inject a tiny amount of lidocaine. Why do I do this? Well, like I said, the patients are often extremely anxious. And putting an EJ in sometimes takes more than one try. If you stab your patient in the neck with a large metal spike over and over and it hurts every time, they are not going to cooperate with you. Now, the con of putting in lidocaine is that it can obscure the landmarks a little bit. That's why I drew the line with the tissue marking pen. So when you're finally ready to place the IV, lie your patient flat and try and have them Valsalva once more. Then insert the IV right at one of the local anesthetic injection sites so it doesn't hurt the patient and you can manipulate your IV as needed. Remember, this is a very superficial vein, so don't go in too deep. If you don't get it on the first try, you can try again in the same place, or you can move down to your second local anesthetic injection site. Remember that EJs don't always flash the way regular IVs do, so if you think you've got it in but you don't see a flash, just remove the needle and then try and withdraw your angiocath a little bit at a time to see if you get good blood flow. 